So far, we've made some pretty fun features on the property, but as of now, they're just a couple one-off session sections that produce a solid five seconds of fun at a time. So the goal for this week is to change that. I think it's time that we linked up the jank plank to the crank plank while splashing a little bit of flavor in between. Hey guys, so I figured we could just talk about what we plan to do today. Today we're working on a trail to connect the two features and it's going to be our main jump trail. The thing that really needs to happen right after this jump is we need a big berm right here to go through this corridor. And right there is gonna be my service road and I don't wanna get rid of that. So we're gonna make a jump over it. This is what I'm talking about. It's a small road on the property just big enough for my truck. It's right in the middle of some prime building terrain though and I don't wanna obstruct it. So what better way to accomplish that than to make a jump over it? Right after landing from the jank plank, the plan is to make a sharp left hand turn to head towards the service road, but we'll need to carry enough speed for about a 10 foot double. So our first step is to make a legit berm so we can make this turn without the use of brakes. I'm going high tech though and laying out the angle of the turn with some sticks. The flow of this 90 degree turn needs to be spot on for a smooth roll to carry speed, so I took a little extra time to make sure I had this transition correct. To make the size of berm that I'm after, we're going to have to push some dirt around and a good amount of it. So after getting things roughed in, it's time that we put the terror tiller to work again. The last time that we used the tiller, we only mounted up some dirt to make it easier to shovel and move, but this time we're finally using it on site to help mold the features that we'll be riding. And man, does this thing make quick work of it? What would have taken me a full day to do with a shovel, I was able to accomplish in about an hour. The tiller does aerate the soil a ton, so a little more packing is needed, but the tiller is definitely worth its weight in gold. A berm is dialed enough for now, so it's time to move on to the fun part, making the jump. We'll be making a log framed box jump. They're quick and easy to build and require less fill than mounting up dirt alone. I have a pile of logs just down from the house that will work perfectly. And using my mower biscuit, it's easy to relocate them to our building site straight up the service road. We have some room to play with here while keeping enough distance for the truck to drive through, so moving this jump face forward a little bit might actually give us a chance to get a pedal stroke in after the berm. But it's still a really short run up. We have to dig down just a little bit to make our first log level since we don't want a crooked jump. A sledgehammer makes muscling this thing into place just a little bit easier. I'm using some rough cut stakes to keep the log wall in place. I had the thought of going with the Lincoln log style, but using these stakes should be plenty of support for this size of jump. Not to mention this went far faster than cutting out like 15 massive notches in our log frame. These things aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Now we just need to fill and pack and more filling, then more packing. And now we have a sweet jump that really needs a landing. But next, we'll need to tackle this huge mess, which is just atrocious. There's a lot of dead wood, holes, and I got a little brushing that we need to do, but for that, I'm just gonna time lapse it. This part of the build is pretty straightforward. All that really needed to happen was a good amount of cleanup and to mount some dirt up for the landing. We just need something small and functional for now. We'll fine tune it later once we get a better feel for how this jump is running. The part that got a little tricky was directly after this. I decided to leave the small tree laying across the trail and pull dirt over it to make a little ledge just to give this line some character instead of building a flat freeway for a trail. Doing this though kind of created some problems with what I had planned. So this area right here is where I was thinking about putting the hip jump, but I don't know how well my angles are and the landing is pretty short, so might have to play with that concept, but for now I'm gonna clear this area up, maybe build up a little bit of a berm uh, up high, a little one, uh, to see if it's even possible to get enough speed and the right trajectory and the right tra trajectory to uh, make a hip jump here. After cleaning this section and removing a surprising amount of standing dead wood, 
It was easy to tell that the layout wasn't going to allow for an easy hip jump build. What I ended up doing though turned out to be a pretty fun little section. I carved a lip into the face of the mound originally intended for the lip of the hip and dug down a bit of a pit in front of it. This made a small bowl before this jump that when you go in it at speed off this log ledge I made, you kind of suck down in it at an angle and shoot out off of the jump. I'm calling this part the pit right now and I'm going to build it up some more in the future, but with this section cleared out, we now have an unobstructed path between our features, which means it's time to try this thing out. This mini road gap turned out super awesome, and not only is it a really fun addition to the trail, but it turns what used to be two separate features into one trail that lasts a little over 30 seconds. You wanna lay under with me, bud? Oh no, you gotta go in the center, Sarah. Oh no. All right, you gotta lay face up too. No, I- Yes, you gotta. That's like, you're vulnerable. You can't volunteer, or at least bring a stupid idea into my head and then not do it. It's nice to finally have and play on a legit start to a trail, but I have a running tally of things that still need to get done. We need to install a roll-in structure at the very top of our trail system. Currently, you need to pedal kind of hard to get enough speed to clear the jank plank, so it can be kind of tricky to gauge the right amount of speed you need to clear it. Our new berm is still a little soft, naturally. Basically, we just need some rain for that. Cranky needs its landing built still, along with a permanent roll-in, and the pit well, the pit needs a ton of work. So with the list of items that need attending to, I, I guess I better get back to work. It's a good thing I left enough room to keep using this service road. If you enjoyed this video, hit like. And to see more trail building, riding POV, and whatever else I end up doing with bikes, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching today, everyone. And as always, until next time, keep that rubber side down.